rendering our husbands on the altar. Hey, my name is TJ and welcome to another episode of A Journey of Discovery. If you are new to my channel, I create faith-based content that I release every Monday, so be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. So last week we discussed um, that Jesus is calling us deeper into him. And sometimes when Jesus calls us to him, it doesn't necessarily mean that our husbands are going to walk this walk with us. Sometimes it means that we are going to go alone, just like the woman in the photo that I shared. Um, so today it's going to be about a little bit about my experiences and what this looks like and how I navigated it and the things that I've learned that helped me the most. And that one thing is surrender and let me tell you about this one word i remember early in my walk with the lord he was telling me to surrender all the time and right when i thought i was surrendering he would tell me to surrender i'm like but i thought i was surrendering have you ever felt like that like the lord is asking you to do something that you already thought you were actively doing and one time and the lord spoke to me this one word capitulate and I'm like, Lord, I have no idea what that means. And I'm over here looking it up in the dictionary. Guess what it means? It means to surrender. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's about to speak a new word to me. And he's speaking an old word um, a new way. <laughs> I don't know. Like God has a funny sense of humor. So whether we're going to say surrender, capitulate, yield, they all mean the same thing. And the reason I want to talk about this today is because what does it look like for you to surrender your husbands, your spouses on the altar? <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and read Romans chapter 12. It reads, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And so you're probably saying right now, TJ, um, the Lord is calling us to sacrifice not our spouses but let me tell you there are and, and you're right let me say that you're right the lord is calling us to sacrifice but the lord will also call us to sacrifice those that we love the most and if you think about the story of abraham and isaac um, the lord called him to sacrifice um the one child he had with Sarah, the one he dearly loved, this promised child, the Lord asked him to lay him on the altar. And I feel like I had to lay my husband on the altar. Like, I feel like in the beginning, I tried my way of trying to get him, like I was spending so much time trying to persuade and convince him of the reality of Jesus and how, you know, this new life that I have within this transformed life is so good, is so rewarding. And I felt like I was alive and I continue to feel like I'm alive. And when we are married, we want to share that with our children, with our spouses and Sometimes <laughs> um, when our spouses aren't ready to hear that, the more we talk about it, the more they kind of push it away. They push it to, to the side and we have to also, and, I, and when I say we, I'm talking about myself included because I'm a mom, and which also means that my superhero name is The Fixer. <laughs> I don't know, am I the only mom who wants to try to fix the situation like okay you come to me with a problem i'm already thinking about okay how we're we gonna fix this and there's times when um the lord called me to lay my husband down on the altar and to surrender control to surrender me wanting to fix this um to surrender my will and my desire to want this to happen quickly and can I tell you that when I did that, 
it was the best decision I could have ever made because when we surrender things on his altar, um, it's like, it's so freeing to recognize that I can cease striving and I can be still and patiently wait on the Lord and, and patiently wait in his time. And, and I want you to walk into that place of freedom as well. In Romans chapter 12, verse 12, it reads, rejoice in hope that we are to be patient in tribulation and that we are to continuously be steadfast in prayer. When we lay our spouses down, we can rejoice in the hope of Jesus and in the truth that before they were ever born, while they were being formed in their mother's womb, that he created them, that he had plans for them and purpose and destiny. And that has not changed just because they haven't yet said yes. It's all about, um, I say that whenever I say that my husband isn't fully committed, it's like, not yet. I'm always saying he isn't fully committed yet. Your, your spouse hasn't fully committed to Jesus yet. Your spouse hasn't said yet um, yes to Jesus yet. That's the hope because we know that we were once there and Jesus in his love, in his great grace and mercy, he called us and we said yes. And if he did it for us, he can do it for them. And so um, let me tell you what else it means um, when we surrender our husbands at on the altar. It means that we not only let go of control, but we also close this. And that can be hard because we have to, that means that we're trusting the Lord. And it's especially hard when you see them making um, these forward steps, right? And then all of a sudden they make a wrong choice or they make steps or they take steps backwards. And it's learning how not to become overwhelmed or feel like, oh my gosh, we're going in the wrong direction. Things are never going to get right, you know, to, to, disempower hopelessness to disempower feeling hopeless and defeat it you know um by trusting and adhering to god's word you know faith is walking by um what we don't see it's walking by those revelations that the lord has given us those promises and we're holding steadfast to that and we're not going to let what is happening in the natural deter us from the hope that we have received in Jesus when he is, when we believe that he is calling our spouses to. So let me encourage you. I don't know where your husband is at right now in his walk with the Lord, but where he is is not where he's going to be because you know why? God has him. You laid him on that altar. And that is considered sacrifice and worship. Let me tell you, when I when Abraham was um, going to sacrifice his son Isaac um, on the altar as the Lord requested, he had went up the, um, the mountain. But at some point, he told his uh, servants, stay right here. Only um, me and Isaac are going to, going to go up by ourselves. So that I can worship the Father. Imagine Abraham, you know, on this three-day journey of knowing what he had to do and yet calling it worship. Calling what the Lord was asking him to do, this very difficult thing. Um, but yet he, Abraham, the, the Bible says that Abraham knew that the Lord had given him promises that could only be um manifested through Isaac and that's what I want us to focus on is that God has given us promises for our husbands too we are keeping them covered in prayer and the Lord is speaking to us about our husband through maybe dreams visions prophecy through his word and we're holding steadfast to that even if it's just one word because let me tell you there are times when I only had one word. I only had one hope and his name was Jesus. And oh, we are going to plead the blood over our spouses. We are going to um, speak 
the name of Jesus. We are going to ask the Lord to begin to break strongholds from their lives, to soften their hearts and to open the eyes of the blind, to cause them to see Jesus rightfully as he is. But it first begins with surrendering them on the altar. In Psalm, I love this Psalm, chapter 5, verse 3. At each and every sunrise, God, you will hear my voice as I prepare my sacrifice of prayer to you. Every morning I lay out the pieces of my life on the altar and I wait for your fire to fall upon my heart. Well, think about this in the context of our spouses, that each and every day we are offering sacrificial prayer, right? And sacrificial prayer is when we are like, oh my gosh, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work, what this, what this is going to look like. I'm not going to get overwhelmed, but I'm just going to trust in you. I'm going to turn my focus from what is and I'm going to put it on you. And that, you know, every morning we are giving our spouses over to the Lord and we're waiting for that fire of the Lord to fall upon their heart. Because this is where the place of transformation begins. So today, Lord, I just ask that you would cover our husbands, that you would make yourself known to them, and that as wives, Lord, we will trust and believe your promises even in the waiting that we will learn not to <laughs> interfere in what you're doing but that we will lean on to you lean not onto our own understanding but in all our ways we're going to submit and surrender to you Lord, so that we can give you room so that you can do what only you can do in jesus name Y'all be blessed.